Welcome, friend, to Life and Liberty Radio. I'm David Householder, here to encourage your pursuit of happiness. You and our partners exploring our shared spiritual journeys. Together, we're dreaming and working for a free society. Tell others today about our adventure in faith and freedom. So breathe in, open your mind, lift up your spirit. Let's get started. So everyone is concerned that we have a whole bunch of illegal immigrants taking jobs from good Americans. Well, it's not that simple at all. And uh, the solution to all this, of course, politicians say, well, I'm for E-Verify. Verify to make true E-Verify, electronic verification. If we just had E-Verify, then we could tell whether or not people belong here and we'd know who should be working and who shouldn't, and then foreigners wouldn't be taking jobs from good Americans. Well, as I said, things are not as simple as all that. Think about it. E-Verify. So who has to carry an E-Verify card? Just people from other countries? Just people with different skin than yours? No. That would be everybody. Yes, everybody. Everybody who wants to work in America would have to carry an E-Verify card. And this card would be really robust and hard to to make a fake version of, of it. would be hard to counterfeit. And it would become like a national identification card. And we've gotten along without a national ID all this time, although I think there's a little collusion with the state governments to make sure that that all works with the Patriot Act and everything else so they can keep track of everywhere you are. Not that they are efficient enough to do anything with that. Big Brother's watching you, but he's lost your file. So praise God for that. But anyways, it will be a national ID, and I'm not sure I want a national ID. I'm not sure I want a database for this kind of thing. I Or put that in the hands of the government where they would have a record of everyone who should be working. So a national database. And I can imagine where that would enhance the Patriot Act, where the Patriot Act then could use this national card and you'd say, well, hey, you know, show us your E-Verify card if you want to get on this plane. You say, well, they wouldn't do that. Well, why wouldn't they do that? It's much more reliable. Next thing you know, you use it for voting, getting on airplanes, everything. Next thing you know, you'll be using it to cash a check. Well, what do you mean using it to cash a check? It's just for E-Verify. Well, no, it's the best ID card in the country. So if you want to find out everything about somebody, insist that they give you the E-Verify card before they do a transaction with you. Then you can find out all kinds of things about their background on big databases and the whole deal. So, you know, this this is highly problematic stuff. This would enhance the Patriot Act, the so-called Patriot Act, to two levels, which we don't really want to see. We give way too much information to the federal government. When I was living in Germany, they had something called Datenschutz, the protection of your own data. You should have control over to where, you, where your data goes, especially when the public sector uses it. I don't care so much when the private sector uses it. I'm on the Internet, and whenever I'm surfing around the Internet, the ads will pop up on the side and on the Facebook thing. And it's always for stuff I like. It's snowboarding stuff. It's surfing stuff. It's watches, things I'm enthusiastic about. I don't care about that. I kind of like it. You know, they know what kind of watches I like, and those ads show up, and that's okay with me. Besides, they're just asking me. They're not telling me. The problem with the with the public sector is they tend to tell you. It's a coercive sector of society. Uh, they They say Uncle Sam's holding out his hat, but he's got a musket behind it, whereas the people from the Ford garage... They just want you to buy their car, and if you don't, well, you know, there's nothing they can do about it. So the the public sector is actually a lot more predatory than the private sector. So we've got this national beta database, which would work hand-in-hand hand with the Patriot Act, and there's accuracy problems. We have 150 million people in the American workforce, 150 million people in the workforce. Now, if you could get the... the, uh, the inaccuracy or the error level down under 2%. Imagine that, you know, get it under 2%, which you never could get in, in, in government tracking of anything. You'd still have 3 million people with the wrong card. 3 million people with the wrong card with 2% error level. As if you're ever in a country this side, this size, going to get below 2% 2 error. It's 3 million people who will have the wrong card, the wrong information, and won't be able to work. Not because they're 
foreigners who shouldn't be here, but because their card's got a mistake on it. And do you trust government bureaucrats to know the difference between uh, La Tourette with a space between La and Tourette and La Tourette as one word and which ones to capitalize? Seriously, <laughs> this, is, this is not good stuff. So we've got accuracy problems, which will be there. And people will wait for months to get jobs trying to straighten out their cards, much like people on no-fly lists now with names like Bob Johnson can't get on planes because some Bob Johnson had a sketchy past. Now, now I don't, I'm not a conspiracy guy. I'm really not. There's no Illuminati meeting underneath St. Mark's Cathedral in Venice. In fact, it's all wet there anyways. And if there is a basement, it's waterlogged. I, I just don't believe in conspiracy theories. I don't, I don't think people are smart enough to keep secrets that long or that they even want to keep secrets. People love to tell secrets, uh, secrets and spill the beans. So I'm not a conspiracy guy at all. I don't believe a dictatorship is right around the corner. But why create tools that a dictatorship could use so quickly. They would love to have a national ID card. The first thing they said in Germany when you showed up at any checkpoint was Papier and Bitte, papers please. Do you want to live in a Papier and Bitte nation? No, I don't think so. The cool thing about America is you can get in a get in a convertible and you know start out in Santa Monica and you can drive straight through Nebraska if you want to. Nobody stops you as long as you mind your own business and pay your own way. That's the way it should be in a free country. I don't want to be doing checkpoints all along the way, telling people, you know, hey, here's my national ID, here's my E-Verify card. So oh, it's just going to be used for E-Verify. It won't be used for everything. Well, sure, it'll be used for everything. What number is used for everything now? Social Security it has to do with your retirement. How many of you not retired people have had to use that card for everything? Why? Because it's the most reliable card from the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. So people started using that number for all kinds of things. It became your identity, identity theft. What do they take? Your social security number. Can you imagine multiplying that by 100, the accuracy of an E-Verify card? What are people going to want to see, your E-Verify card or your social security number? Well, that's easy, your E-Verify card. So you better have one. And uh, they'll be able to track all kinds of stuff. And privacy, well, that'll just disappear. It's fine with me because my life's kind of kind of dull. But uh, for people who really have things that they really don't care to share with the public sector, this would be not so great at all. So it's going to be used for all kinds of other, other things. Plus, it gives the government decision as to who you can hire. And I don't think that's any of their business. If you want to hire someone, it's up to you. And it also makes you the unpaid enforcer. Truth is, our federal government is mandated by the Constitution, and I'm a Constitution guy, mandated by the Constitution to have a uniform uh, process for naturalization. It's not up to the states. That's a federal thing, and it should be a, a federal thing, because then the state that's easy with immigration, everybody would come through that state and just go to the other states. So we have to do this together. We have to decide how we patrol our borders together as a country. It's not up to Arizona. I don't care what they think. It's not up to Alabama. It's not up to Texas. It's up to the entire United States as to how we patrol the borders and who we let in. has to be. has to be a team decision. But uh, the truth is they are unable to do it. They don't know how to do it and may never be able to do it. Have you ever flown? From Southern California to Houston, you fly right over the border. It is vast, expansive, and there is no way, no way, physically, no no way. It's two or three inches on your map in your atlas, but uh, it is a long piece of real estate. There is no way, unless we put the entire U.S. Army on that border and people would still get through. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. We will not be able to close the border and there is no fence that would work long term. The Great Wall of China never worked either. Same mentality, same problems, and the Mongols still came across whenever they wanted to. Truth is, you were, you and I could too. If you and I were in Mexico, wanted to get across the border, we'd find a way. And you know it, and I know it, and that's just the way it is. So it's not going to do any good, but they're thinking, hey, you know, what we'll do since we can't do it, we're the federal government, we're mandated by the Constitution to take care of the naturalization problem, but since we can't do it, we're going to make the business owners do it. They're going to make you the unpaid enforcer. 
They're going to make you, the small business owner, the person who's in charge of enforcing our immigration laws because they can't do it. Great. Just what you want to do. Make you the unpaid enforcer. You want to work for naturalization and immigration. No, you don't. You just want to get your business done. You want to be able to hire whoever you want. At, uh, and you should be able to hire whoever you want. So, E-Verify sounds like a great idea in a political speech to low-information voters. But for those of you who've been able to follow me and know what I'm talking about, uh, it's no, 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 no. In fact, bring back the Bracero program, the program for worker visas, for people to come into the country legally, pay taxes. It worked for decades. Who killed it? That would be, as always, big labor, the enemy of orderly immigration. Well, that's all for today on Life and Liberty Radio. Thanks so much for sharing this part of your spiritual journey with me. Now, the views on this program are not necessarily those of my advertisers, sponsors, places I work or do business with. They're purely my own, but I'm sharing them with you, so share your ideas with me. Write me on Twitter at Liberty House, L-I-B-E-R-T-Y-H-O-U-S, no E. Until next time, let's continue dreaming and working for a free and spiritually grounded society.